Uh, hey guys, I just want to do a video showing off my very first completed build using the CNC, CNC machined uh, scales. Um, these are what I'm, I guess they could be any kind of scales. I was calling them dragon scales, but they could be fish scales. Uh, you know, if, I, if you're a fisherman, they're fish scales. If you love fantasy, they're dragon scales. Um, <laughs> whatever you like. I, I think they look cool anyway. They're uh, titanium, uh, grade 5, tie 6 4 scales. This model is a super tinker. I did uh, blue anodized titanium liners to match. And it's got tweezers that I removed the little plastic nub that comes with it and I replaced it with nickel silver. I also do brass, but nickel silver seems, I don't know, like a better fit for this knife. And just standard Super Tinker tools. And so, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I and or I engraved on the inside. I want to do this on all the knives now. It just says my name. Uh, I made this since I made the scales. Uh, the date, so July 2016, and the serial number. And this says 0001. So my very first build. Uh, the inside of the yeah, it's probably hard to see that. The inside of the scales are skeletonized. Uh, took off about six or seven grams per scale, so I think that was worth it. Uh, you can almost see the little internal uh, brass pin in there. That's what goes into the cup part of the scales. And um, the main thing that differentiates this 91 millimeter build compared to the 93 millimeter is this is a four pin build instead of a three pin but I it looks awful if you expose that fourth pin so it's hidden inside there and that pin actually does not serve much of a function except it will keep the springs from moving in this direction in and out um, it doesn't have any force supplied to it in any other direction the knife will actually function without that pin in it but that spring will eventually work its way one way or, or the other so it is needed but it it's really just to keep things in place there's no forces on it at all so that's why i like to hide it in there and then it keeps the outside nice looking and um yeah i'm pretty happy with this the main difference other than well from a stock uh super tinker the default ones have the plastic scales are actually thicker than these titanium ones and they also have outer liners so altogether thickness wise this saves about 0 0.120 thousandths of an inch or 0.12 inch whatever uh, about the thickness of a pliers layer which is actually pretty significant so since the titanium scales are the structure like the main support structure of the knife now it's not needed to have these extra little liners so um, i get away with that and the tweezers because the backing of the tweezer actually is you can't see it but the back spring for the blade layer i the trick I'm, i use is the back of the tweezers rides along that back spring internally. So normally there's a liner which supports the back from the inside, but I, since I want to get rid of the liners, that's the way I chose to do it, and I'm very happy with that system. Keeps the knife as thin as possible, it's super strong, and uh, converted to this titanium frame, the, uh, it, it's noticeably different than uh, a, def or a stock one with aluminum liners in a frame. It's kind of a uh, crispier snap. Um, it feels a lot like the difference between like a Alox Pioneer and a, and a normal plastic sack. I love, I love this size though. I used to mostly modify the 93 millimeter size 
But since Victorinox started doing scissors on that size and also most people want other tools, it's just it becomes too costly to buy three or four different Swiss Army knives to rip them apart to build one when, you know, uh, if I'm modifying this size, there's, there's quite a few tools I can swap around and I mean, I can build something up to like a Swiss champ, which is eight layers if somebody wanted. So you can pretty much pick and choose your tools and then now be able to pick any kind of scale texture you want. Uh, liner finishes, I do brass as well. Um, and at the time of doing this video, this one's not sold yet, but I will probably post it for sale. Uh, this will be my very first one. So, uh, something like this, exactly as pictured, we'd be going for $325. That's about the right price for the materials and, uh, and uh, work that goes into something like this. All right, guys. I'm. Oh, actually, I'm going to add a little bit of machining stuff at the end of this video, so bear with me here. All right. Uh, I'm going back into my laundry room machine shop here, and I'm just grabbing a couple of parts that I finished up yesterday for this standard kind of textured -y look. I like the um, that swirly pattern the best, I think. This, it's hard to see at this camera. Oh, there's a polished, the left one is polished uh, brass cross and the right one is a polished copper. And this is like, uh, I don't know what I'm officially calling it, a swirly texture I guess, and this is more of a traditional cross hatch. I really like the swirly one the best though. So far that's my favorite. And, oh, what I was going to show you is I was, this was kind of my first temporary fixture I made to hold the scale. Only holds one at a time. And that's great. And I used that to prototype and make sure the G-code was correct. And now that I'm happy with that, I went and bought a bunch of chunks of aluminum. So I've got this one I'm going to make uh, into the, I guess, my official 91 millimeter fixture block and all I've done to this so far is I've machined some shoulders on it so the vise will hold it like this the vise jaws will hold it like this and I can fit well maybe more than four but I'm only going to fit four on there so far so two fronts and two backs so I can machine two sets of 91 millimeter scales at one time and I think that will be fine I surfaced it with the Tormach fly cutter, which worked great except for one major problem. Um, I have bought a lot of Tormach stuff now. I, I bought their slitting saw. And I have got that's a 132nd slitting saw blade. I've got a plan for that that I hope works, and I'm going to show that in about a week or two if I can. It's basically another way to hold fire steel, and I finally figured out a way I like. And I needed to be able to cut a very, very thin slot. And I'm hoping that will cut titanium okay. It's supposed to be a carbide blade, but we'll see. Uh, this was the fly cutter I used to surface the aluminum. And after I figured it out, it worked good. But I don't know, like I had this open all the way. Right now it's kind of as small as it can be, like that's adjustable. I did not realize that if you had it all the way out, it really runs unbalanced which makes sense if it's hanging out really far but it was very unwieldy and I this is my theory because what happened was the bar flew off and I was standing here and it flew off it hit the outer door with such a force that it like lifted it up like that but thank goodness it's, this is Lexan or polycarbonate whatever didn't break or shatter and it you know it protected me it scared the crap out of me when that bar flew off, but I'm I'm questioning whether I tightened it enough, which I can't prove I did or didn't, I can't remember, but I thought I did. But when I had it open all the way, I think it was vibrating so much, it may have loosened those. I, I can't be positive. But since I've, you know, shortened that to the smallest possible uh, uh, circle size for, for facing, it worked fine, I had no problems, but yeah, really, <laughs> it gave me a scare when that flew off and, and slammed into the door. Um, the only other thing I got is well, a bunch more brass gears. I'm, I'm really getting uh, interested in doing some steampunk knives. Got some ideas there. 
Uh, I'm kind of going a little nuts with the different scale options just since I've had the machine. There's so many things to try. I'm kind of just jumping all over the place trying different things. But um, yeah, so far it's been great. The only My only regret is that I didn't buy this sooner. I had the money. I was nervous to spend the money. Now that I am, I was like, well, I, you know, how long is it going to take me to do the CAD cam stuff? I, it's, I don't know anything about it. And it hasn't taken that long, a little bit of learning, and now I feel confident I can make any 2D stuff. I'm still a little shaky in the 3D, but I'm, I'm getting there. But anyways, uh, I think that's all the rambling I have for now, and um, thanks for watching. Cheers.